Hi, this is Honor of Serene for CreativeCow.net. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to use Premiere Pro 2.0's DVD authoring capabilities. Now, Premiere Pro 2.0 introduces the ability of adding menus and submenus to your final DVD. However, if you plan on doing anything more advanced than that, I would strongly recommend that you take a look at a dedicated DVD authoring application such as Encore DVD. While creating a DVD with menus and submenus, the first thing that you have to take a look at is this DVD marker button as found on the timeline. Once you select the DVD marker button, you're presented with this window which has a few different options. The name option or the name area essentially gives this particular scene a name. Since this is the first scene of our DVD, I'm just going to give it a name of first. Now the second thing that you have to be concerned about, and this is perhaps the most important thing, is the marker type. Now there are three different types of markers. The scene marker represents that this particular scene will be found on the scenes menu of the DVD. The main menu marker represents that this particular scene will be placed on the main menu of the DVD. And the stop marker represents that this particular scene, when selected, will take you back to the main menu. Now since this is our first scene, I want to place it on the main menu, and therefore I select main menu marker. Now, the third thing that we have to take a look at is this thumbnail button. Thumbnail is essentially a visual representation of that scene. Since black doesn't really represent what our scene is about, we want to change the thumbnail, and you can do that by using this controller. So I'm just going to scroll ahead by clicking and dragging this, and this gives us a good visual representation of our scene. Now, the other option is the motion menu button. What the motion menu button does is, once you click on it, it essentially animates the thumbnail instead of giving you a static thumbnail. So once that's complete, I'm just going to hit OK. Ok, I'm going to scroll a little further in my timeline and add another DVD marker right about here. So I'm going to click on this DVD marker button and I'm presented with this exact same window that we saw the last time. I'm going to give it a name second and I'm going to leave the marker type as scene marker because we do have content prior to this particular scene and we do have content after this particular scene. Also, I'm not going to alter the thumbnail offset option over here because the thumbnail perfectly represents this particular scene. I'm going to hit OK and scroll down a little bit further onto this fourth image. I'm going to add another DVD marker here, and I'm going to call it third. <clears throat> I'm going to leave this marker type a scene marker as well because there's content prior to the scene and there's content after the scene. Also, this thumbnail perfectly represents this particular scene, so there's no need to alter that as well. So I'm going to hit OK and move a little further towards the end of the video. I'm going to add a DVD marker over here and I'm going to name it last because this is going to be our last DVD marker. And I'm going to change the marker type to stop marker because what we want is as the user comes to this particular marker, it will take them back to the main menu. I'm going to hit OK. Once you're done adding the different DVD markers onto the timeline, it's now time to create DVD menus. To create DVD menus, simply go to Window, DVD Layout. And once you get there, you'll be presented with a message saying autoplay DVD with no menus. Essentially what this message is telling you is that although your DVD will play from start to finish, it won't have any menus. To add menus, simply select change template and select from one of the many templates that ship with Premiere Pro. I'm just going to select the numbers <coughs> scheme and hit OK. I'm going to pre preview the DVD by selecting preview DVD. And you can see that the first scene does show up on the main menu, and the scene selection menu does have our second and third scenes. Now to customize the background, make sure that you have the DVD layout window open, as well as the effects control window open. I can change the background by simply browsing for a file on my hard drive, and I can add an audio track in the background if I wish to do so. Again, I can either apply this to all the menus by clicking on this button, or I can change the menus independently. Another customization technique is to take your mouse and place it over one of the DVD elements, such as titles. In this case, I'm going to take my mouse and place it over the main title, and you'll see that it is accompanied by a small T. Now, this T indicates that this text is editable. To edit the text, I simply double-click on it and change that to slideshow. And once I do that, you'll see that the changes are made instantly. 
Now you can change the properties of this particular element also in the effects control window by changing the font or by changing the font size or any of the other options that you see here. As you've observed, Premiere Pro 2.0 gives you a lot of customization options while preparing your DVD. I highly recommend that you try out some of these customization options on your own, and if you have any questions, please feel free to post in our forums. Thanks for watching.